virtual general meeting this evening following the webinar. So thank you once again for joining us. Now, as you all know, the Internet of Things chapter, of which some of you are a part and some of you are joining in as guests, aims to provide a platform for professionals like us to be able to come together, share our experiences, share the knowledge that we have of deploying IoT technologies, of adding value from uh, IoT technologies, to be able to develop a common understanding of what IoT technology, applications, adjacent adjacencies to IoT, standards, data governance, and ultimately driving the adoption of IoT products and services in Singapore and across the region. That is our ambition and aim through this IoT platform and chapter. On the webinar today, we are going to be specifically talking about the increasing importance of IoT technologies and initiatives that we've observed as we emerge from the COVID-19 pandemic. During this period, we've seen several individuals, businesses, governments, most of my clients and in industries across consumer, retail, banking, healthcare, government, education, rethink and reshape almost every aspect of how they conduct themselves by focusing on resilience-centric strategies. I mean, it ranges from the work and workplaces moving online to an increase in e-commerce adoption, digital payment methods going contactless, to a greater reliance on wearables, uh, automation, robotics, and AI, AI solutions to be able to solve for safety, productivity, and efficiency of workers in construction, in government, in manufacturing. In this concentrated period, we've seen the adoption of IoT to solve for current use cases, but also solve for newer use cases, which have emerged as the result of the pandemic, go up rapidly. And what we are now facing is a question and a testing of our abilities to be able to scale the adoption and driving of IoT technologies that have been, that have been already adopted, but at a pace that we've never done so before. Just to give you and share with you a little bit of information, IoT technologies today are expected to become the biggest driver of business growth in the next decade. It is estimated by a recent McKinsey study that the economic value that IoT will add to our gross uh, domestic product will be as high as $14 trillion by 2030. That's a very large value add that we're expecting from IoT alone. Now that makes it incumbent upon us to be able for us to understand what are some of the latest IoT trends that we are seeing around us, seeing industries around us that impact us the most, education, health, consumer, retail, travel, adopt, and perhaps take a look at what are some of the um, you know, deeper IoT technologies and adjacencies, whether it be it cobots, AI, blockchain, edge, 5G, that are gonna be driving the tomorrow of digital transformation as we emerge from COVID. That really is the crux of the webinar that we're gonna be driving with you today. And I'm joined today by two experts and colleagues of mine from IBM to give a brief introduction of them. Sena Periyasamy is a partner and head of data analytics, AI and IoT at IBM Services. He's based in Singapore. And he has over 25 years of experience in advising and implementing AI solutions, analytics, and IoT end-to-end -end deployments across several sectors in ASEAN. And some of those sectors have been deeply impacted by the uh, shutdown and the lockdown that have emerged from COVID. Srinivasan Rangachari is a partner with IBM in the emerging technology space covering IoT and AI. Srini, for short, Heads are an IoT talent pool that we have of over about 1,500 consultants in the region and globally, working specifically in areas of connected vehicles, Industry 4.0, smart cities, intelligent appliances, smart manufacturing, and so on. Both these, both of my colleagues, Sana and, 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 and Srini, are absolutely the right experts to walk us through the challenges that we are facing as we come out of COVID and what are the opportunities those challenges throw for us in being able to provide for IoT devices, data, and these technologies becoming the future of the way we run our businesses. 
Let's start with Sena. Sena, I'm going to hand it over to you, and I would like you to share a little bit more about our audience uh, with our audience about what are some of the findings that we that have just recently come out of our um, CEO survey that IBM conducted in 2020, which outline IoT trends and the impact that these IoT trends will have on the way um, our clients and indeed we as consumers are going to be impacted with as we emerge from COVID-19. Over to you, Sana, to, to help us think through some of these really exciting trends which are emerging. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, pleasure to be here um, talking to you know this audience. Um, over is running that PPT. Can you bring up my uh, slides, please, if you don't mind? Right, while the, you know, the, the PPT is coming up, um, as Charu mentioned, um, we will uh, split this session into 20 minutes each between me and uh, Srini. And uh, I'll, I'll just talk about some of the you know, trends and changes we are seeing in the industry, across industries, in fact, um, due to the COVID and also how um, technologies, various technologies, IoT, AI, uh, and some of the other things now are impacting different businesses and within the businesses, uh, different functional areas. And we'll just spend some time on it and then we'll kind of get uh, deeper into specific IoT related use cases and some of the you know, futuristic ones, right? Uh, that's how we are going to know, kind of talk about it. If you go to the next one, please. Uh, next slide, yeah. Right, so um, let me focus on um, some of the, as you know, Charu mentioned a uh, few studies IBM have done uh, during the peak of you know, um, COVID mid of 2020 and also something very recently and uh, something very specific to Singapore business also. So I just want to highlight how the business execs are thinking in terms of the, uh, the technology impacts. And also I just wanted to show you something very innovative uh, we have done, uh, kind of that will give us an idea on what more can be done. And then Srini will kind of get into some uh, deep dive into some of the specific uh, new age technologies around IoT. And if you go to the next slide, I'll, I'll be a bit quick with some of these things because I'm conscious of time, but if you have any you know, things you want to know, ask me. I think we have a kind of a Q&A at the end or so, right? No, if, if possible. Right, so um, we have a team of professionals who conduct you know, research on various technology and market demands uh, to identify new trends in the technology adoption, right? And I would like to show you a glimpse of some of those um, around IoT and related areas. But to start with, uh, we did one study in the second part of 2020. And um, part of that study, we just tried to kind of you know, get answers to a few questions. Questions like, are some industries sensitive to certain technology adoption? It's, it's during the peak of COVID, right? You'll have to keep that in mind. What is the technology impact on business performance and the role of technologies play in various industries? And we also wanted to kind of understand as the mix of technologies, we are talking about different technologies here, right? Uh, as the mix of technologies changed across industries during you know, the COVID crisis. And we also wanted to kind of understand the mix uh, in terms of getting some business you know, performance at an optimal level. So these are all few questions we kind of you know, put it in front of, and then we just did this study. And if you go to the next slide, um, how did we go about um, uh, getting this uh, no, study done? Um, we analyzed thousands of you no know, C-suite, CXO, CEO level interviews during that period and combined it with uh, publicly available financial information across various, um, uh, various industries and um, across countries, 40 countries or so, including Singapore. I think that's, that's a key thing. And the, uh, the financial data we used is first half of 2020, right? No, 99, from 2017 to first half of 2020 or so. And we also added various technology surveys uh, that was available at that point of time. So I call this, uh, this study as you no know, study of studies and information available, collating all those things, right? Uh, and it gave us some interesting findings, which I'll show you in the next slide. If you go, go to the next one, please. Can, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, right. So uh, this is more of financial uh, kind of an information. Uh, the data showed that while some industries like travel, automotive and petroleum had a huge impact on their business during the crisis, which is obvious, right? And travel, nobody was traveling. Uh, some industries like IT services, life sciences, no surprise here, right? 
and even banking and insurance at a moderate business growth it was a big surprise we thought you know every industry is going through a bad time but it's not so if you look at the real financial data a uh, few industries had a reasonable growth up to 10% or whatever so it's an important thing because it plays a huge role in how some of the you know, technology and the newer technology is being adopted across various industries and um, um, uh, the reason we did this analysis is to see how technology adoption in these industries have changed based on the business outlook not only the you know, kind of you know, uh, the revenues or you know, business they are doing but the business outlook also and we also wanted to see is there a link to the emergence of new tech in certain areas right so that's an important thing so if we go to the next slide i'll show you uh, yeah what we did here this is a very interesting one we kind of um, uh, divided this role of technology in pre and during covid into four buckets i'm still talking about during covid era as i still see this continuing for some more time at least personally that's what i think maybe for whole of 2021 i know the topic for today is post covid but what we see here will continue and also have an impact on how things would shape up in the future so that's why it is important for us to kind of understand okay let's see the four segments uh, you can see it on the no left side um, the first segment we call it as a differentiator these are all technologies driving differentiated performance and widely adopted right um the second one is the opportunity bucket in which we have classified technologies driving differentiated performance but not yet widely adopted the third one is technology is no longer driving differentiated performance which means pretty much everybody is using it and widely widely adopted also so you have to have it it's like a no hygiene factor you have to have that and the fourth one is the emerging there are technologies not yet driving the differentiated performance but um not widely adopted also but it could potentially change and it varies from industry to industry that is the key part on the right side uh, we have just given taking the you no know, kind of banking and financial services market how some of these technologies will fit into different buckets right um if you look at that picture uh, as you see it you no know, iot is considered as an emerging one in the banking industry in my opinion rightly so banking has primarily used point of sale pos based data right alone in the past and that would uh, change in the future with real time analysis of wearables and other consumer device data to provide custom offers to consumers at real time right so that's why it is emerging and also if you look at it in terms of the positioning of that you no know, internet of things it's trending towards opportunity or differentiator segment so that's clearly an indication that you no know, this is moving in a different direction this is just one industry view the banking and financial services no view but if you try to map this different technologies across various industries that's what we have done in the next slide if you can go to the next slide please all right it's a busy slide but i hope you can read it um as you can see iot playing an important role across industries in various ways i have highlighted the iot ones with blue stars so so that you can easily you know, see them it's all over the place you, you can see it right uh, iot is a differentiator in industries like energy utilities petroleum and retail energy companies use sensors in their production facilities to get real time data retail uses sensor data for inventory management we have seen that right uh, in certain industries it's already an essential component like aerospace healthcare and industrial kind of you no know, um, sectors and in automotive it is widely used with say connected cars are vehicles being offered by the most of the new vehicle manufacturers some of the newer ones are always with some of these features so far what i have presented is what we see uh, during the covid time frame especially in the last 12 months or so but again as i mentioned in the beginning it will have a no uh, impact in the future also but we also did um, uh, in the next slide i'll show you how iot impact some of the business functionalities because more one is the industry aspect of it but within the industries what business functionalities and what kind of a you no know, technology has an impact that's what we have presented in the next slide if if we can go to the next one right um again we didn't map this to all possible you no know, kind of you no know, business functionalities but we picked few of them like the agility and efficiency customer experience supply chain and operations and uh, so on and few of them and um if you look at it the way to read this slide is to see the top table with respect to the you no know, 
score against iot across various functions and you can see iot scores high on customer experience and supply chain and operations uh, these are two areas where iot is making an impact across industries as well so that is why the overall table on the top uh, clearly indicates the table below shows how iot can impact the business performance specifically you no know, kind of impacting the business performance in certain functional areas that that's a key thing to see to improve speed and to act or react on even faster across various functionalities and you can see this impacting more more on the you know supply chain and operation side so clearly iot has a no uh, kind of you no know, say in the supply chain and operations aspect of it right and um, we will see some of those use cases uh, in the later part of this you know, presentation right you can also see cloud and data making an impact across various functional areas and that's understandable right uh, iot is for specific purpose in fact it uses cloud um as a kind of an infra whatever and uh, produces new sets of data that ai and other technologies can use it to bring value correct right? and you can also argue that edge computing that's one of the no um, technologies mentioned here um it's uh, the edge computing is also dependent on iot to some extent to connect with the larger ecosystem so that way you can see both edge and iot together in 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 uh, in some context now this is uh, some kind of a no understanding in terms of the different technology mixes and what kind of industries and what kind of functions you know they're kind of impacting uh, if you go to the next slide we also did some study recently around um, uh, spotting the trends um, in 2021 and going forward um, if you go to the next slide sorry uh, this is just a placeholder if you go to the next slide uh, this is specifically around singapore so there's a it's a huge study um, it, it just got released around uh, jan time frame but i have summarized that into one slide so that's why it's looking little no kind of no busy here um what what we see here is you no know, um this is a singapore view from singapore based business leaders are those who deal with singapore market and the five trends are you know, kind of self explanatory and um, let me just uh, you know touch upon some of the key ones with respect to you no know, uh, iot um first one again it's very obvious that the social contract between employer and employee um uh, i think you know has to be you know strengthened and uh, digitalization of the workforce char also you no know, kind of mentioned about it in, in the beginning right has had a tremendous impact on the way we do business and way we do kind of you know do our jobs also remote working and rethinking and rebuilding supply chains with technology infusion to build an adaptable business model are some of the impacts of the covid that the businesses have started implementing and will continue to be part of the you know overall business competency going forward also very very clearly right and when you think of supply chain iot has a huge role to play we see some of the use cases and some examples in the latter part um building a safe environment for workforce with resilience uh, to bounce back if if one more covid like we don't want that but in in case one more covid like situation happens and building an agile enterprise you can see that you no know, chart on the left side bottom uh, agile enterprise that can withstand a pandemic like this um it's a key strategy for business executives and all these areas some of these technologies specifically iot will play a key role right and having spent some time you know talking about the trends um i just wanted to kind of know um show you specifically um um some of the use cases for iot in the next slide uh, just to kind of quickly highlight some of them you might be knowing it already if you go to the next slide please right um no brainer uh, some of the use cases we currently see and also work with number of our no customers in the region asean and apac and as well as in the global regions first one is connected no cars or connected vehicles cars that share data with the users for predictive maintenance and allow users to control you know, the car's features it's a well known thing right and it's becoming a standard feature in the new passenger cars or you no know, new commercial vehicles so we see that happening more and more iot plays a huge role you no know, the devices and sensors placed real time connecting to you know the you know central servers and providing all the information smart buildings this is a big thing especially from a singapore context right i see a lot of demand coming from real estate companies on how they can make their buildings and net zero energy and sustainable green buildings i think that's a big thing going forward net zero energy uh, sustainable green buildings uh, use 
uh, a lot of iot technologies we see this trend with most of the new buildings and they even plan for it from the design stage itself it has to be right at, the, at, the, at that level and maintaining the light air con at optimal levels based on the demand uh, to control energy consumption um this is this is one of the things you no know, most of the people are actively looking at and how do we really you know kind of make that happen uh, the third one grocery stores in in general any stores uh, we see stores using lot of iot devices connected to the supply chain that's a key thing to maintain optimal inventory and in healthcare wearables um kind of you no know, uh, with sensors play a major role uh, as we know but beyond all these in the recent times we see a shift in um technology adoption to mimic the real world into a digital world right uh, that's a key thing so mimicking the real world into a digital world to bring newer capabilities around you know safety uh, efficiency and you know cost savings uh, i'll play a quick video it's about for about 2 to 1 and a half minutes uh, time frame uh, so some work we did for you know port operator to understand how mimicking the you know the real world scenarios using iot devices and sensor into a digital world really help them to know build a very safe highly you know efficient you know port operations can you please the video please i think it's coming up Every day the tide is different. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. We have a lot of wind. Everything has its impact. The Port of Rotterdam is some 50 kilometers long, 3000 companies, 470 million tons of goods, providing employment for some 385,000 people. The port needs the digital transformation in order to survive. as for them it's crucial to become the smartest port in the world across industries smart technology and creative thinking are driving innovation around the globe this is how the port of rotterdam is going the extra mile i like to say you can't have ai without a digital twin A digital twin is a digital representation of a physical thing and all of the assets around us are becoming really intelligent. The IoT sensors are critical to this. IoT sensor is a lot of things you can see, you can hear, you can touch, it can feel. They measure everything from the water movement, the tide height, vibrations, pressure, movement, temperature, turbidity in the water. so we'll have better insights into how all the different assets and all the different equipment within the port are operating with each other. We're using five different types of sensors throughout the port. You have to make sure that the data that you get is valid. And you don't want any disaster to happen because sensors are hacked or broken. If you can start to digitize everything from the cranes to the ships to the key walls and get the information from them in real time, your decisions can be made extremely fast. and with much better accuracy. The technology they're using in the control room is the IBM Hydro Meteor dashboard. We look at the information about tidal current, salinity, visibility, wave height, wind, wind direction. The data is really helping me to get this ship in in a safe manner. If I make the wrong decision, you could end up grounding the vessel, making a too wide turn, ending up in a collision with other ships, and that of course might have its impact on the environment. Uh, maybe we can stop it here it kind of gives you an idea of what we are talking about right uh, this uh, this video is available on youtube so if you are interested in um, seeing this entire video uh, i would recommend you to go to youtube and search for ibm port of rotterdam uh, you will see this uh, it's an interesting work um, but now um, with 5g being rolled out in singapore right uh, and we see more and more innovative use cases emerging for iot 
to talk about some of the new age technology around IoT, I, um, I request uh, Nostrini to talk about you know, how edge computing, robotics, and digital things are making an impact or potentially can have an impact. Yeah. Trini, Thank, thanks, Sana. So I think Trini, I think you're next. A I, I, couple of things, Sana, that I took away from from your, uh, you know, from your session. A, the fact that um, business leaders are looking at the use of these technologies as a means of value realization as they emerge post COVID. Clearly, not just IoT, but the way they're looking at cloud, they're looking at edge, they're looking at AI, they're looking at robotics. There is a clear impact on business. That's number one. Number two. It also appears to me that IoT is now being looked at in areas where perhaps previously it may not have been looked at, right? So for example, you talked about service experience, you know, customer experience, et cetera, coming in, um, which basically means as the front end has gone away, given that people are under lockdown, how are we leveraging technology? Um, I think the third thing that I walked away with and Shrini as a segue to your topic is that, and what we learned from the port of Rotterdam is that it's not just the deployment of technology, it is a coming together of the business process, looking at where do you want to get to in terms of outcome? Who are the people who are going to be consuming your technologies as an outcome? And then redesigning the process. And in redesigning the process, different technologies can play a part, not just IoT, right? So what is the data that's going to be generated? How will that data become available on a device which can be used by a consumer? Uh, how, can, how can robotics take away some of the work that a person was doing and automate it, right? So it's coming together of a lot of technologies. So Shrini, as you come into your um, conversation with us now, talk to us a little bit about how some of these technologies are working together in adjacency and how will they need to work with people to be able to deliver to outcomes that businesses want. Absolutely, Chadu. I think thanks, thanks for that and thanks for the introduction. Sena, thanks for the wonderful context of how things are shaping out there in the industry. Uh, I hope I'm audible and Xiaoping, if you can bring up the uh, charts as well, that will be helpful. What I'm going to try and cover in the next 20 minutes or is about two or three uh, enablers in the IoT space that we are seeing emerging very fast and trying to reshape what one can do with IoT and the adjacent technologies, right? And uh, what you see on the chart are exactly those two or three key enablers, digital twin to begin with, edge, and then robotics. Uh, if you can move to the next chart, we'll try to define these. These are broad subjects in themselves, you know, getting too much deep is not possible within a short period of time, but we'll try to define them during this conversation, right? And Xiaoping, if you can click twice onto this, uh, we have all seen sensors coming uh, into equipments, assets, buildings, etc. in the last uh, decade or so, uh, one chart back. Uh, and, and they have started to give insights and data about these assets. We have built a rich history of data about any working equipment, be it a car or be it a machine or be it an appliance at home. And we have started to use that to extrapolate to say, is it, is it healthy? Is it going to fail in its health? Is it kind of feeling a little bit sick? Did we intervene before it breaks down, right? So that's something that we're doing quite well and we are happy with it. Where this digital twin is taking it is to the whole new realm of the fact that can you simulate that tomorrow, if something changes, will my equipment asset continue to behave the same way or is it going to perform something differently? Yeah. For example, we are seeing uh, temperatures change across region. We are seeing weather change significantly across months and days. Uh, we are seeing uh, you know, patterns changing on the surface. So will everything remain the same in the performance of the asset or no? So can we simulate something? So digital twin is a digital virtual representation of that physical asset that we are talking about with the ability to kind of simulate how it can behave given certain external factors that we can think about. Yeah. So uh, take in case of product design, uh, for those who are involved in product design, you know ideation to launch is a whole phase where we continue to design the product, it evolves, we test it, it fails, we improve it, right? So with Digital Twin, it's possible to accelerate that process by digitally trying it out on the twin, saying would it, would it survive these kind of conditions? Yes, no, be it a wearable, a watch, can it survive this kind of conditions inside a factory, in a mine? Yes, no. So some of those can be simulated. 
you can improve the whole experience of designing and launching something. So that's just one example. So that's where digital twin with IoT and a whole lot of data and AI is going towards. If you go to the next slide, Xiaoping, uh, digital twin can be defined to be uh, coming up in three areas, right? The first one, design twin. So if you click Xiaoping once, you can see that in the design stage, the product design stage that we just discussed, digital twins can play a very good role, right? They can help us simulate how a vehicle can behave. A lot of connected cars out there in the last five to 10 years, right? A lot of data collected by all the original equipment manufacturers. So what, do I, what are they doing with this data? They're giving it to their product design teams and saying, this is how the vehicle is behaving on the road, right? In different markets, in different geographical and weather conditions. What can you do to improve? So that is something that Digital Twin is doing in the design stage. If you click once more, the next big aspect is the design of the process. We all talk about services. Uh, for example, during the pandemic, it was so difficult for somebody to come on site and help us install something or repair something. So the process of you know, running and designing and installing something can be changed with a Digital Twin. You can be taught how to operate a particular equipment, how to assemble a particular equipment with the help of a digital twin. Yeah, when you do that, the process starts to change and that's where the process twin comes into play. And lastly, the operational twin. Uh, everything is in operation and things are working fine and you want to make a change. What change do you make on the assembly line? So Xiaoping, if you click once more, we talk about the operational twin. In the business of operations, how do you bring the operational twin to help you kind of improvise the way things operate, the things perform and the things improve in a factory or in a retail shop or in an assembly line, yeah? With this, we move to the next chart, talk a little bit more about an example here, right? Uh, Xiaoping, if you can move one more, I can see the slides not moving, one more. Yeah, Sena introduced, Sena introduced the port example to you, right? Let's go a little deeper to understand what happened in this digital twin. Why are we doing it? Obviously, lack of space, yeah? Not something that we are not conversant with in, in a place like Singapore. Limited amount of infrastructure like land available. Can you do maximum things in it? Port of Rotterdam facing a similar challenge. The secondly, customer requirements are changing. What you see on the left bottom is a customer of Port of Rotterdam telling them in 2030, I'm planning to send an autonomous ship to your port. Can your port handle that ship, right? So these are the kind of challenges that are coming in front of Port of Rotterdam. So what do they do? They build a digital port like the physical one to start working on this. Xiaofeng, if you move one more chart, that is the Port of Rotterdam for you that we saw on the video as well, a top shot. Now to begin with Digital Twin, what you got to do is connect instrument and collect a lot of data about how things are behaving. Xiaoping, if you click once more, people will realize how connections will have to happen. All these sensors put in place, gathering data. Now that's a lot of instrumentation, but don't worry if you're using assets, equipments and appliances which are out there, uh, which are already out there for some time and others are building digital twins on it, digital twin libraries are available. You can start using them and build your own data on top of it to jumpstart your digital twin uh, asset process, right? So with this instrumentation, the next chart will tell you that the whole port becomes digitized, right? That's a digital port for you. The port of Rotterdam, the way a pilot of the port that you saw on the video talk to you sees this now, right? There are a few sensors out there measuring the height of tide, the stream, the wind speed and direction, the visibility from the, from the ship to the port and the traffic of the number of vessels, right? His challenge is to make sure every vessel, which are large ship containers, are able to come in at the right time, load, unload, and get out as fast as possible because time is money in this business, right? For both the port operator as well as the ship operator. So what do they do? If you go to the next chart shopping, we can take the example of one such uh, ship that is Ellie from Maersk which is on the left-hand side in the white block, which is trying to come in. It's a few miles out there, like we see here in East Coast in Singapore as well, near the port. This, this ship wants to come in, unload some things at Port of Rotterdam and go out. Now, the ship captain and the port pilot are talking to each other as what's the best time to come in. I can come in quickly, 
do it and, and go out, right? In normal circumstances, they will try to use all the manual information available. With Digital Twin, if you were to click once, Xiaopeng, you will see that the simulation tells both of them that if you move at this point in time, you will use the following fuel, you will, you will emit the following emissions, you will come the fastest and you'll reach here at 4.30 p.m. You can load, unload, and get going, right? For doing this, you will require four tugboats and about 10 mooring lines, et cetera. So there is a cost involved with it. Now, what do we do? Is there another option that we can give to both of them? With Digital Twin, it is exactly possible to simulate. If you click once more, it will tell you what's the other option. The other option is to use lesser number of tugboats, lesser number of mooring lines, but come a little later. Is that something you can do? How's your schedule looking like, right? So both of them are beginning to use these simulations to arrive at what's the right thing that they can do. Now, if you click one chart further, this is the traffic there, right? So it's not about one vessel that both of them are grappling with. There are so many vessels all waiting to come in and go out. So with this kind of scale, you can't do this manually. You need something like a digital twin that can help you get there, right? So I hope this gives a good view of in a setting like a port, what exactly Digital Twin is trying to simulate and kind of give us. Let's take a little look at what's the technology beyond it, yeah? So if you go to the next chart, to, to simulate a Digital Twin, obviously there are real world assets and uh, buildings and people required. As you gather data, the most important aspects are to gather the real world data, create physical models out of them, conduct data analysis because Digital Twin is all about simulating how what-if scenarios, right? So a lot of data comes in, they get analyzed, models are created on how every asset behaves with respect to surrounding conditions. And with this, a predictive engine is developed and then you can start simulating. You can give it all your what-if conditions and it can tell you how I will behave in the future. Right. So that's the architecture behind. One more chart will give you, other than the Digital Twin platform, what else do you need to kind of make use of Digital Twin? Xiaopeng, if you go one chart further, so that's the neighboring technology that you require. IoT cannot work alone, right? You need mobile, you need web app, you need uh, all the kinds of enterprise applications, which are like process management systems, data systems, IoT stack, simulating modelers, et cetera. On the left-hand side are all the connectivity layer that you need, right? That's the port and its equipment, all the devices connected, throwing in all the data back to you. So this ecosystem of components come together to get something as complicated as a port's digital twin back to us, right? So I think that gives you a view of how we define digital twin. What do we mean by digital twin? Digital twin can be for a small component or can be an ecosystem of components like a port by itself, right? With this, I think let's jump over to one more topic that we should cover in, in today's uh, topic. And, and before that, uh, application of Digital Twin across all the functions that we see in business. Product development, production and operations, servicing, end of life. All of it are spaces where they use. Industries that can use them, I think, discover significantly all of the industries that are going to use uh, Digital Twin from here, right? So if you go to the next chart, Let's talk a little bit about the next disrupting technology, which is edge. And we saw some of that statistics that Sena showed as well. What is edge? Physically, literally is, is on the right-hand side picture. Uh, technically, what is edge is on the left-hand side of the picture, right? Very clearly, edge is taking it from the cloud right on the border of where things are beginning to happen, like a machine, a car, uh, a home setting. It could be any of this. And edge could exist anywhere near where we are. Yeah. If you go to the next chart, uh, it is about taking data and application process back to the place where it is happening. Say, for example, think about a warehouse, right? We have a lot of warehouses in Singapore, work happening in the warehouse, action happening in the warehouse, decision to be taken in the warehouse. Can we take the decision making process there? Today, we are used to doing things on the cloud a lot, right? Edge is about bringing some of that back to the edge because of few reasons. What are those reasons? You need faster insights and actions, right? Uh, you need to act now. It could be in a, in a healthcare industry. It could be in a security industry. It could be in a safety industry, right? You need it to be there. You need continuity of operations. What if my connection breaks? 
am I still going to be able to continue operations? Edge ensures some of that, right? Security of the data itself. I don't want my data to go all the way to the cloud every time and certain classified data, I surely don't want to. So can I do it here? Edge helps us in these three advantages that the industry has been looking for. Right? So hopefully that defines Edge in the way it is. And there is enough evidence out there that tells that Edge is really out there for adoption for the following business process reasons, right? Uh, automation, Edge can do much, much better and faster, right? Optimizing operations like in, the, in a factory or in a building or in a, in a safety event, et cetera, it can do faster. Training people can be done faster with edge technology coming in, right? Employee understanding of how a machine is behaving can be done faster with, with this. Finally, risk models that we carry in our businesses, in our operations, in any business that we do, either it is managing a facility or it is managing a factory or it is managing a store in a retail scenario. All of this can be made less risk averse by bringing edge to the phone, right? So with these advantages, let look, let's look at a couple of examples like we did for Digital Twin. This is a factory for you, right? Those who are conversant with manufacturing, manufacturing technology architecture is divided into four layers, right? Starting from the bottom where you have machines, going up where you have the corporate headquarters and then the cloud, right? Traditional one is on the left-hand side. What you see on the right-hand side, you'll start to see a lot of edge words coming up, right? So edge and 5G, can start to play a role in changing the factory network architecture. Uh, I'll take a small example and I'll talk about a few examples a little later as well, right? Machines are behaving in a particular way. Their data is going to the cloud and coming back. If they come after two or three minutes, it's not of much use for that machine for the production, right? So if you can do anything within that particular minute, then and there, that is what Edge is helping all of us do. And with 5G wireless network inside a plant, you can do all of this much, much faster. That's why you see a lot of conversations around the combination of edge and 5G, helping us change the way use cases are from a from an IoT perspective. So when if you go one more, now I, I choose to take an example, which is closer to Singapore. This is the Singapore park, one of the East Coast park, you can, you can assume. You have all been here. There are a lot of cameras that are deployed here, right? So Xiaoping, if you click once more, these are cameras that are capturing, are people safe? Is everything good? And is there any safety security reason for alertness, et cetera? Traditionally, all this data gets captured, stored, and then transported after a period of time back to the cloud, right? Now, imagine the pandemic period, there are some alerts, not a lot of security people around, you want to send something quickly. How do you do that? Today, cameras are equipped with the ability to conduct analytics, right? So you put the analytics on the camera, not keep it on the cloud. That in very simple terms is the edge concept for all of us, right? So you decide the edge, you decide the analytical model on the cloud, you take a part of it and put it on the camera. The camera can take decisions for you. Of course, it can't take a lot of decisions. It can take certain split second emergency decisions. For the rest, you can take the data back to the cloud, right? So this is another example for other than the factory setting showing you how we can actually use edge for our benefit, you know, for very quick reasons. Now, let me show you a very small video, probably half a minute uh, to, to kind of show you how edge and robotics are combining. Uh, Xiaoping, if you can run the video for us, please. Thank you. While you go back to the PowerPoint. So this is something uh, set up in one of the IBM labs and we have one in Singapore as well, right? Uh, what you saw the white armed equipment is nothing but a cobot. A cobot is one of the robotics uh, elements that we have that are helping us. There was a similar camera or a phone that we all carry. It was conducting a visual inspection, right? How is a camera or a mobile phone able to do that? Because on the edge, there are certain analytics that it's able to conduct. 
what you saw was the robotic arm, which was able to maneuver almost 180 to 270 degrees, not something that a human eye or a human hand can do. That's the power of robotics combining with edge to kind of bring benefits. It's a similar use case that you're seeing on my screen that I'm wanting to show you. On the left is an existing manufacturing example. There is an incoming part that has to be manually inspected and it is put on the assembly line, it gets assembled. What happens? Later, there is inspection. If there are any defects, the whole process is a waste, right? Now, on this lower picture, you can see the small defect that somebody is trying to capture. Now, if we are trying to capture this manually, the operator is going to be tired after four hours. He's likely to miss a few of these. This is actually what was happening at a client place. Now, what was there on the right-hand side is what we did using robotics, camera, edge, and a little bit of analytics, right? We introduced that in place of the operator. The robotic arm was able to capture multiple images, about 100 plus within a minute, analyze it on the edge, tell us then and there, there is defect or there is no defect. This part could go onto the assembly line, bringing almost 90% reduction in the number of defects that were reported, right? That's a classic example of a robotics edge and IoT combining to kind of bring throughput and efficiency. So with this, I'll, I'll kind of take a pause. It's about 20 minutes that I've spoken, but I hope I've been able to help you define two or three enabling uh, IoT technologies, which are digital twin, edge, and robotics along with it. Yeah. Uh, over to you, Charu, uh, for, Thank for you. any questions. Yeah. Thank you, Shrini. That was, that was exciting. I think for me personally, the fact that these technologies have to come together and the fact that you have to create uh, a focus on the outcomes versus just focusing on independent technologies is the key, True. right? Um, and the fact that when these technologies come together and perhaps we haven't got the time to talk about that, but what is the data that's going to be generated and how do you consume that data to drive value uh -huh. is going to be the, the, the other part, right? Now, I just want to sort of shift gears a little bit because I, we are coming to the top of the hour. Um, I wanted to make this session a little bit more interactive because I know Sena, you've shared trends and then Srini, you've shared some exciting technologies. I, this is a time when I want the audience to get involved. So audience who are participating with us today, please send us your questions that you would like to ask Srini and Sena and we'll take those. But while those questions are coming in, Sena, I wanna go back to you and ask one specific question. You know, that particular study that you showed us earlier, there have been, um, other black swan events, or there have been other large game-changing events which have happened, per perhaps not at the scale of COVID. What makes us think, though, that COVID-19 will have an, a long-term impact on the adoption of IoT that we are seeing? Do you think this is a short-term trend, or do you think this is here to stay? So, um, Charu, no, to be honest, um, I don't think in our lifetime uh, we have seen anything uh, like this or even in our no, previous lifetime, no, our parents or whoever it is. I don't want anyone to see anything like this in the future also, okay? Uh, but getting ourselves locked for you no know, months together, right? And uh, no, not able to do the kind of things which we used to do normally, right? It used to be the normal, uh, has completely stopped. Uh, with this, maybe initial few weeks, few months, I'm talking about all over the world, not only Singapore, right? You no, know, things were, you no, know, people are worried and how do we do and what do we do? But they've all realized that, you no, know, whether it is, we are, even in our own organization, right? Just to take, kind of take an example, we all felt in the beginning, you no, know, I think last March, April timeframe, how are we going to conduct our business? How are we going to serve our customers? How are we going to make those commitments, whatever we have given to our customers, right? But the technology came and really helped us to manage it. But today, we pretty much run our you no know, kind of things as if you no, know, it used to be in the past, except you no know, seeing people face to face. But we got used to Zoom meetings and WebEx and things like that. So one important thing I see is whatever changes uh, we have seen. As someone was telling you no know, as you no know, um, uh, ten years of you no know, the technology innovation and changes happened in you no know, less than a month or two in, in you know during this COVID period. That's not going to go back. So it can only go from here. Uh, how do I you know kind of enrich it and how do I kind of you know, make it you know, better uh, for the future? So that way, it's very very clear um, the way in which you now it's 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 a clearly a new normal, right? This is going to be the normal. Maybe we will do little bit of the old normal things just to make things easier, but otherwise this is the new, new normal. 
Uh, that way, I don't see anything going back. Here and there, a little bit of things will go back, but technology advancements uh, will will kind of you no know, move forward. And one important thing, that's why if you look at my chart also, no, IT services has you no know, kind of you no know, gained over a period of time, and there is a no. I, I, I was just looking at some survey and some you no know, analysis that you no know, IT services expected to grow for next another decade or so, right? In in a big way because people have realized. that you no know, um, we can do certain things we were just thinking about it in the past but now we know that we can do certain things even without going there you no know, remotely so when we can open up the borders this pace will only kind of you no know, kind of go faster than what it is today and this i see at least for next 5 6 years or so by the time we will have something new in terms of the technology innovation and stuff like that thanks thanks and i think we're seeing a lot of commitments being made um, in this area by clients which are fundamentally linked to their business results i think that which is what you are saying and technologies are already here the use cases that have been put together are really important for the way businesses are reshaping so i i do think in the medium term at least this trend is here to stay i want to take an audience question now and two two audience uh, members have asked us this question which is um uh, shrini maybe you can take this what do you think will be the impact of 5g which is now coming on on edge you know and we've talked this, talked about this internally as well uh the question is with the faster connectivity which 5g will make available and cheaper cloud that we are seeing uh will it slow down edge adoption and edge devices are more expensive than sensors so you know given given the fact that you are talking about edge what will the what will be the role of 5g and how will they work together yeah i think uh, interesting question and a question that's being debated a lot outside as well uh, as a, as someone who's doing a collaboration of both these technologies i can say they are absolutely complementing right they don't threaten each other they are absolutely complementary to each other uh, we are we are doing use cases where we are bringing the power of edge and the power of 5g to make the use case very very compelling for every end user right and and there are myths outside which says what edge can do 5g can kind of replaced by transporting data all the way to the cloud and getting back mind you that that is not completely true right edge and 5g act locally within a particular range and they have the power to do those aspects right so they will combine and in singapore we are working with a telecom operator on 5g an industrial player on their edge technology and with ibm uh, uh, ibm cloud services to kind of bring the combination of these use cases so i would say they are absolutely complementary charu just a comment on your point about edge in edge hardware being more expensive compared to uh, you know 5g as a as a means to transport data that econo- economy may not be completely uh, you know valid we still need edge devices to kind of do some things at the edge because time is of essence there yeah so imagine a, a whole car uh, in the bmw factory being painted coming out of a paint shop that's a big surface area 15 cameras taking images there are about 1000 images per minute being taken they cannot be transported on 5g and brought back but you need 5g locally to kind of take it to the nearest router do the processing and get it back then and there all this within a span of about 3 minutes or 4 minutes that a car has to move out right so to me the answer is they are absolutely complementing each other and they are doing it very well the the interesting bit here uh, shuni also could be the the fact that if you look outside of singapore and there could be markets where even though 5g will be rolled out in the coming years uh there could still be use cases you know on areas like plantation or areas where you need to provide health and safety measures where you don't have adequate connectivity and infrastructure where you still may have to work through um edge devices um we happen to be in a hyper connected economy but not all markets are the same as singapore right so i do think that they are complementary but i do think with 5g the importance of edge devices will definitely need to be re- rethought of right in the in the in the short term um yeah. yeah we we are reaching the top of the hour um any more questions from the audience okay i did have uh, a few more questions i think we are we are at the top of the hour before we go right just one last question as we see the rise of iot not as a trend but as a means of getting value from your technology deployments given um how cheap cloud has become now 
what are the top two challenges that we see and hear clients, companies, CEOs facing in the deployment of edge technologies, right? What are these challenges that are holding, still holding companies back from making IoT as an imperative in their technology plans? I want to hear, you know, one challenge from both of you. Can you go first? <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, to, to me, I mean, when I, when I talk to all the CXOs for the last so many years on the potential IoT applications, the biggest challenge I see is the, is continues to be uh, the clarity of the business impact that we all want to derive by using a technology like IoT. As long as there is a business imperative that we all can justify, I think IoT, edge, hardware, device, cloud, cost, telecom will all fall in place. Right? To me, that continues to be uh, something that all of us seem to grapple with. Uh, and, and I think we are learning fast. We are learning from successful examples. Maybe the Port of Rotterdam and a few other examples are going to tell the world how to kind of look for benefits. But to me, uh, that's the one challenge that I, I still see, Charu. And, and I think we are all the time trying to help clients understand that business imperative that they should derive from. No, I agree with uh, Srini. Now, clearly, um, how do I get an ROI um, kind of you know, um, around some of the you know, use cases I want to you know, kind of look at it and getting the best you know, use case which I want to adopt? I think that's one, that is primary. The secondary one is, okay, now I've decided to you know, do something, but you know, what is the best technology available? Because it's evolving and there are different technologies you know, there in the market. And... Um, who do I approach to kind of really get that kind of an advice and then get the best in place? Um, by the time you identify the best, there is new best. I think that's that's a challenge um, always in this industry. But I think these are the two things. How do I get the right ROI and how do I get the, you know, the best technology, the best mix of things available for me to you know, get to that end results quickly? I think these are the two things I can you know, think of. Thank you. Thanks, Senan. Shrini, I think to me, um, what heartens me is that IoT is no longer a subject which is in the realm of technology or with the CIO. Given the current use cases we've seen across health, across retail, across financial services, across uh, education, it is becoming mainstream. And as it becomes mainstream, it will get the importance that it deserves from business leaders. And to your point about it having an ROI and delivering on a business outcome and the way it's going to work with other initiatives in the enterprise, I think this is definitely going to be an impact we're going to see in the next, you know, in the next three to five years. And therefore, for me, that is a long term impact that COVID at least has left behind uh, when it comes to the deployment and adoption of IoT devices. So thank you very much, Rini and uh, Sena for joining us today on this webinar. I mean, from, a, from an SES uh, IoT chapter, we are very happy that you could join us, share a little bit more about what your clients and companies are hearing from the market and especially like the examples from the port of Singapore, uh, port of Rotterdam, um, you know, the example from the East Coast Park that was very exciting. Um, Xiaoping, if you can quickly move to the, the closure, I, I just want to sort of tell the people who are on the call, thank you for joining us today. Uh, you know, I am going to ask Xiaoping to flash um, a QR code in the spirit of keeping this digital, uh, you know, for we, we do a lot of these events, both as part of the IoT chapter, but also as part of the Singapore Computer Society. Feel free to become a member of the Singapore Computer Society, get access to a lot of webinars and content shared by experts um, like Srini and Sena that you that you saw and heard from earlier. And here are some of the, you know, here are some of the upcoming events in the next couple of weeks that you can join in. And if you click on the QR code, you will get access to the calendar of events that SCS runs. Again, thank you very much for spending your evening with us. Uh, this is a Friday. Hope you have a great weekend as you go on. I will now ask our participants who are non-members of SCS to drop off. And we will continue to go on to do our AGM uh, with the SCS chapter. Thank you very much and look forward to seeing you again. Goodbye.